So I am indeed going to talk about uh, the spaces men create for themselves. Uh, but first, I want to tell you why I'm here. I'm here for two reasons. These two guys, my two sons, Ford and Wren. So when Ford was about three years old, we shared a very small room together in a very small space. My office was on one half of the bedroom, and his uh, bedroom was on the other half. And you can imagine, if you're a writer, that uh, things would get really crowded around deadlines. So when Wren was on the way, I realized I needed to find a space of my own. There was no more space in the house, so I went out to the backyard, and without any previous building experience, and about $3,000 and some recycled materials, I built this space. It had everything I needed. It was quiet, there was enough space, and I had control, which was very important. As I was building this space, I thought to myself, surely I'm not the only guy to have to um, have carved out a space for his own. So I, I did some research, and I found that there was a historic precedence. Hemingway had his writing space. Elvis had two or three man spaces, which is pretty unique because he lived with both his wife and his mother in Graceland. In the popular culture, Superman had the Fortress of Solitude, and there was, of course, the Bat Cave. <laughs> so I realized then that uh, I wanted to go out on a journey and see what guys were creating for themselves now. Here's one of the first spaces I found. It's in Austin, Texas, which is where I'm from. On the outside, it looks like a very typical garage, a nice garage, but on the inside, it's anything but. And this, to me, is a pretty classic man space. It has neon, concert posters, a bar, and, of course, the leg lamp, <laughs> which is very important. I soon realized that man spaces didn't have to be only inside. This guy built a bowling alley in his backyard out of landscaping timbers, uh, astroturf, and he found the scoreboard in the trash. Here's another outdoor space, a little bit more sophisticated. This is a 1923 wooden tugboat made completely out of Douglas fir. The guy did it all himself and there's about 1,000 square feet of hanging out space inside. So pretty early on in my investigations, I realized what I was finding was not what I expected to find, which was, quite frankly, a lot of beer can pyramids and overstuffed couches and flat screen TVs. There were definitely hangout spots, but some were for working, some were for playing, some were for guys to collect their things. Most of all, I was just surprised with what I was finding. Take this place, for example. On the outside, it looks like a typical northeastern garage. This is in Long Island, New York. The only thing that might tip you off is the round window. On the inside, it's a recreation of a 16th century Japanese tea house. The man imported all the materials from Japan, and he uh, hired a Japanese carpenter to build it in the traditional style. It has no nails or screws. All the joints are hand-carved and hand-scribed. Here's another pretty typical scene. This is a suburban Las Vegas neighborhood, but you open one of the garage doors, and there's a professional-sized boxing ring inside. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, uh, there's a good reason for this. It was built by this man, uh, who's Wayne McCullough. He won the silver medal for Ireland in the 1992 Olympics. And he trains in this space, uh, he trains other people, and right off the garage, he has his own trophy room where he can sort of bask in his accomplishments, which is another sort of important part about a man's space. <laughs> so while, while this space represents someone's profession, this one certainly represents a passion. It's made to look like the inside of an English sailing ship. It's a, a collection of nautical antiques from the 1700s and 1800s, museum quality. So as I came to the end of my journey, I found over 50 spaces. And they were unexpected and they were surprising, but they were also, I was really impressed by how personalized they were and how much work went into them. And I realized that's because the guys that I met were all very passionate about what they did. And they really loved their professions and they were very passionate about their collections and their hobbies. And so they created these spaces to reflect what they love to do and who they were. So if you don't have a space of your own, I highly recommend finding one and getting into it. Thank you very much. <laughs>